Oh, that's mine. That's mine. You're not getting this pen. Sorry. <laughs> Quick story. Uh, how I ended up where I am today, uh, several years ago, I was watching TV, national television, and a Democrat said, and I, I'm not picking on Democrats or Republicans, please, you know, just listen to the story. A Democrat said, we have a better voting record on gun rights than, than the uh, Republicans have. And I said, yeah, right. So I looked up Luger and By. Well, I got away from that. So here I'm at today. At any rate, you heard uh, Greg talk about uh, John Callahan, and we're going to give him an opportunity to let him tell about himself. Come on up, John. Well, the telling about myself is going to be really short. In fact, the whole, my whole uh, information here will be really short. Uh, some of you know me. I'm one of the co-founders of the Green Tea Party, your friends to the south. Craig Lyons, the other one that uh, started that Tea Party. Uh, we were sort of doing our Tea Party thing down there, and uh, as Greg mentioned, they had the, uh, this meeting up at the Heartland Church, and we were invited up there, and Greg and, and I went up there. And it was, and I just want to share this with you, because it was really neat. I mean, you had 70-plus Tea Party people in the room. Uh, there were a lot of issues that were discussed, some of which were very divisive issues. I mean, they were not Casper Milktoast type discussions. And uh, the amount of unity and mutual support and enthusiasm in the room was just kind of electrifying. It was really something to see. And uh, one of the things that came out of that is that the Tea Parties that were present got together and they elected representatives from each of the districts. Uh, and I ended up being the, the representative for 8th District. So, one of my missions is to uh, reach out to other Tea Parties. Not everybody was there because some Tea Parties didn't know about it and some couldn't come and the weather was bad and a whole bunch of reasons. Uh, but one of the things that I want to do is identify within the 8th District those Tea Parties that didn't get a chance to go up there and get with them and give them an opportunity to participate in all this. It looks like we have between 9 and 11 Tea Parties in the 8th District. Uh, there are two, you folks, uh, that we worked with before. I knew about two folks because we worked together in the campaign. Uh, but there are two others that we're still trying to make contact with. We think they exist, but we're still trying to find the right person to talk to. So anyhow, we're trying to get that uh, structure in place where we can coordinate and cooperate and work together. Uh, the immediate goal of Hoosiers for a Conservative Senate is to defeat Richard Luger. And as Greg mentioned, and I, I know now from my own personal experience, you know, uh, Luger was a guy who probably started out as a pretty conservative guy. I voted for him. Uh, but he's been in Washington for a very long time. And I worked in Washington for a few years, and I can tell you that it's a real good place to get totally out of touch with the rest of America. It really is a strange place. Uh, he's been there too long. Uh, he's a guy who started out as a conservative. He's ended up as a liberal. If you study his voting record, and by the way, we're researching his voting record. Uh, the Hoosiers for Conservative Senate is doing some vetting of our own. Uh, there's a group that you all might want to participate with. Mike Lewinsky is heading that up to look at his voting record. Well, I've seen enough already to know that it's uh, he's gone. He's gone to the dark side. He may be a good guy, and he probably is a good guy, and he probably has good intentions. But that really doesn't make a whole lot of difference. You know, we're in a very serious situation in our country. And just because somebody has good intentions or may have good intentions is not a reason to have them in office. So I think that this effort to replace Luger with a more conservative center or a really conservative center is something that's really, really important to do. Uh, we're not helped by rhinos in Washington. It really hurts us, in fact. Uh, I don't know if you've seen all the videos with Barack Obama and, and Senator Luger sort of setting side by side, but there's a bunch of them. So you'll see some of that stuff. In any case, I want to urge you to become involved in that. Uh, I do want to make sure, though, that everybody understands that what we're doing with, these, the, with the 8th District, and indeed all of the districts in Indiana, uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to provide the means for Tea Parties to work together. We're not trying to run anything. We're not trying to direct anything. Uh, I was elected by the Tea Parties in 8th District. I was not appointed by Hoosiers for Conservative Senate. I represent the Tea Parties in the 8th District. I'd like to represent you folks. 
So anyhow, in the course of doing that, uh, I invited John Hicks to come to our district meeting. We had a district meeting last Saturday. Uh, he came out. Uh, I think he liked what he saw. i got to let him speak for himself on that. You'll get a chance to talk to him about it. Uh, but he suggested that I come to the meeting tonight uh, and extend the invitation directly. So that's why I'm here this evening. I'm here to invite you to participate in this. It's entirely elective. You participate if you want to. You don't if you don't want to. You have a set of issues that you're concerned about. Fair tax is one. That's one that the Green Tea Party is also concerned about. Uh, but you've got your own set of hot buttons, and you're entirely free to, to pursue those. There's nothing in this that's going to try to direct what you do. What you do is your business. But what we are trying to do is get the infrastructure in place so that we can work together, so we can cooperate with each other. Uh, when we were doing the campaign in 2010, I got really forcefully introduced to that because we put together, the Green Tea Party put together a whole lot of materials, some of which were pretty neat. We had these, I don't know, you may have seen some of them. We pretty well hit the 8th District, 9th District, but we had these kind of burma shave signs along the side of the road. You know, there were five or six signs, and they were a little jingle. You know, uh, a trillion dollars down the drain. Uh, you know, whoever the candidate was in that district, he's to blame. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> And uh, they were pretty effective. We estimated that about a quarter of a million people saw those signs just by doing counts of the traffic passing by and all that kind of thing. It's a very soft number. Uh, but in any case, we also had signs prepared for 1st District and 2nd District because we really wanted to take Donnelly and Viskoski out of the pattern. Uh, and we made a, a gallant attempt, and, and I don't say that for myself, but there were a lot of, a lot of people who participated in this. We made a gallant attempt to get up to 2nd District and 1st District to try to deploy these sites. We tried to contact tea parties in those districts. We couldn't do it. I mean, we had nominal contacts. Telephone numbers weren't correct. We spent several days trying to get a hold of people. We finally just ran out of time. So up we went to 2nd District, tried to deploy sites. Well, it's three hours up there, and that gives you about three hours to deploy sites, and then you've got three or four more hours driving home by the time you get there. We just couldn't do it. We got some signage up there, uh, but it wasn't enough to topple Donnelly. I think he could have been beaten, to be honest with you. I think if all the tea parties had been working together, we would have bagged him. He was vulnerable. But trying to do it by ourselves, we couldn't do it. So the message that that I want to extend to you all is that we are, you know, we're very passionate, we're very independent, and that's the way it ought to be because that's what makes us. That's our strength. But in some ways, it's also our weakness. We need the ability to work together. We need the ability to cooperate when we want to cooperate, not because we have to, but because we want to. And so what we're doing as part of this uh, district effort is to get the infrastructure, the communications, the coordination, so we know each other, we know who the contacts are. We're putting on a video conferencing capability so that we can get the leadership of the various tea parties in, the, in this district together quickly. So you don't have to spend days and days and days or drive 200 miles to talk to somebody. But we can get on the line uh, in an evening and get everybody together and respond quickly. Because we've got to be able to respond rapidly. Uh, I think Greg will attest, you know, you, these things, issues come up, the media asks questions, you've got a golden opportunity, but you can't wait six weeks to get the act together to respond to it. You've got to respond quickly. So we need the machinery in place to do that, and that's what we're trying to do. We have a comm check set up for Monday uh, to exercise this video conferencing capability. Uh, it's actually being provided by the Freedom Makers folks. Uh, it's courtesy of them. Uh, they're not charging us anything for it, so the price is really great. Sometime I think we ought to make some donations to them, but that's a separate issue. Anyhow, uh, they're providing the capability. Uh, I was on it last week. Works really well. Uh, that's the kind of thing we need to be able to do. You know, if you guys have things you want to do, and the ladies here, and you've got a you've got a, a hot button, something you want to pursue, fair tax, come up a couple times. Uh, it gives you the ability to reach out to all the other tea parties and say, hey, look, here's what we, here's our idea, here's what we want to do. Do you guys want to play? And if they want to play, then they can play. It would give us clout. Uh, I think orders of magnitude more clout than we have right now. Tea parties are effective, but we're isolated. The truth of the matter is, we're all kind of on separate hills. Uh, we know each other, there's personal contacts, but we don't have the means. You know, I'll, I'll give you the following challenge. Could you get online this evening and in less than three hours contact every Tea Party in Indiana? Can anybody do that here? We can't do it. I don't think anybody else can either. 
But when we get these nets in, this capability in, we will be able to do it. Uh, and that's what we've got to be able to do. We've got to be able to work together. One comment I want to make, uh, I have long talks that I give about the left, but there's one bottom line as far as I'm concerned. It's in response to Laura's comments earlier. These people can be beaten. They can be beaten. They can be beaten for a lot of reasons, and I'm not going to go through all the reasons because you already talked about a bunch of them. <coughs> they can be beaten. However, they are entrenched. They are organized. They've been pursuing their agenda for 50 years. This isn't something they started yesterday. This is something they've been doing for a long time. They can be beaten. I think they're more vulnerable than most people think they are. I think they'll fall quickly if they're challenged. But it ain't going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in six months. It's not going to happen in a year. It may take five, ten years. It took them 50 years to get where they are. And we're not going to beat them in a year. So what we want to do is get the infrastructure in place. You know, we're, we're going to get Mr. Luger retired this coming primary. It's time. He needs retirement. Uh, but right after him comes Barack Obama, and we want to retire him too. We have to retire him. Uh, and if we don't, these guys will take over. Now, everybody here knows that, so I'm not going to repeat the message, but I think you understand that stakes are very high right now. Uh, my own personal opinion, I'll just share this with you. I was a guy that was in the Air Force, I've been in the military. Uh, I think this country is in more jeopardy today than it was in World War II. The truth of the matter is, neither Japan nor Germany was going to invade the United States. There was no chance they were going to topple democracy and free enterprise. They might have taken over Europe, they might have taken over the Pacific, but they weren't going to overthrow democracy in the United States. There was no scenario where that was going to happen. However, today, that danger exists right now, from within. The left is very actively pursuing this. You know, you'll hear them every once in a while say, oh, we love our country too. No, they don't. They don't love this country. They love the country they want to create. They love a vision of a massive government with themselves in charge. It's a modern aristocracy. So that's what we're up against. we got to beat these people. So anyhow, that's my message. I have only one other comment that I want to make sure to get in here. Uh, we, there is a group now, a uh, statewide group, that Mike Lewinsky is the coordinator for, and I've given this information to John Hicks, by the way. Uh, if any of you are interested in participating in research, in writing, somebody mentioned in writing letters to the editors, letters to the newspapers, you know, all, any kind of writing, getting materials out, he's right now looking for help, and he needs help. So if you get an opportunity and any of you have any bent at all towards writing or research, you know, I mean, you don't have to be a PhD to be a researcher on this kind of thing. Uh, if you have a little bit of time and you can help him out, he would very much appreciate that. You can either contact him directly or let me know and I'll get a hold of him and let him, let him know. So anyhow, I want to extend the invitation. If you all would like to participate, we would love to have all of the tea parties in the 8th District participating in all of this. And I thank you for the opportunity to come over this evening and talk with you. I see a number of faces that, that I've seen in other meetings. Uh, it's a real pleasure. It's a real honor to be here. Uh, I want to thank Greg for his talk. Uh, he's, he's a little modest in some of this. I think he's working 16 hours a day on his job, on his business, and another 16 hours a day on, it, on the tea party. He's extremely active. He's working like just as hard as he can. Uh, and so I think anything we can do to help that is going gonna, is gonna to benefit all of us, going to benefit our kids and our grandkids. Now that I've got grandkids, it's hard to believe a guy as young as myself, but I do have grandchildren. And uh, that's, that's the game we're playing here. Most of us will be gone before this gets played out one way or the other, but our kids won't be and our grandkids won't be, and I'd like them to grow up in the same kind of democracy with the same kind of free enterprise and opportunities that I had when I was a kid. So that's what we got to do. And, uh, Appreciate your help. Appreciate the opportunity to, to talk tonight. Thank you.